Dukes and Bell. We start off every day and every hour by saying, hey, man. We are glad that you are here hanging out with us. Uh, Atlanta's number one sports station. It's number one sports show. Here's the deal, guys. Uh, Falcons in action this week. We got football. We finally get to the preseason. Uh, it is going to be one of three games. You'll listen right here on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Five o'clock pregame on Friday. Kicks at seven. And, Mike, um, we will get into the latest with Jeff Okuda, but I think the news for me right now is the Falcons activate defensive lineman Calais Campbell. Mm -hmm. Now, we told you this. Um, he hadn't been practicing. All right, Just think of it as load management, and he could be activated at any time. This wasn't him on the pup list or any of that stuff. If you see any of that, that's inaccurate. But he's been around. Mike and I, we've seen him. Yep. So he's, he's been, there. He's been yep. activated, which means, Mike, I'm guessing he's going to practice he may not play Friday, Ooh. but he's going to practice against the Dolphins and maybe get some work in. Yeah, man, I'd love to be uh, down there for this, but, uh, you know, just we can't make that happen. But this is where you really get some work in where you talked about, I'm not sure just how exotic some of those looks. Vic Fangio is going to throw at Desmond Ritter. We were talking about this last, I think it was Friday, show up at Hooters, that, uh, you know, we've not really seen our, our Falcons defense when it comes to in some of those 11-on-11s coming with exotic looks yet for Ritter to pick up. But that's that's why there's such a great, uh, you know, kind of teaching, uh, you know, tool for the coaching staff with Ritter. Yeah, no doubt, guys. And um, for the, the injury to Jeff Okuda, which I'm going to let you hear Arthur Smith talk about here because he said this last week, actually it was Friday, and then they got the MRI results over the weekend. Here's what we know. Not as serious as we thought, which is great, okay? Whenever a guy gets carted off, Mike, you always go, oh. But it's not as serious from that standpoint. But it doesn't mean that he may not still be out a few weeks. And if that's the case, then do you go into the season without him practicing potentially, Mike, as your mm -hmm. other starter at corner? Or do you rely on some of the guys we've been seeing in Trey Flowers, Mike Hughes, or Clark Phillips? I mean, I know that the argument on Phillips is his size, but, you know, I'll keep banging the drum. I think that dude is, is can play. I think, you know, you, you've seen it. And, and I know there's a familiarity with Drake London because they're packed 12 days, and that was kind of a cool moment earlier in camp when they had two battles, motto a motto. One, one by him, one, one by Drake. But they look good. We've got more depth. That's one of the, I guess, the byproducts of what we were trying to tell you in the offseason. We had money to spend. We've addressed needs. So now when, heaven forbid, a Cuda goes out, you got guys, to your point, can step in. Yeah, I uh, – and by the way, he's been having a good camp. Um, I'm talking about Jeff Okuda, but – if you're missing the work, I think it's just going to be hard to make a decision on that. Here is what Arthur Smith said about Okuda and the injury. We know it's an ankle or lower leg. Mm. Okay, they've not been specific, but we know the MRI came back negative, and and it, it's not as serious as we thought it was. So with Jeff, you know, you know, it's an ankle. So you look at it, and I just don't want to be quoted on something and give you you know one way or the other. But we'll have more after he gets done with an MRI, um, and then hopefully it's optimistic and be back out there so it's kind of where we're at and i hate to be that vague and this isn't like you know trying to be vague for competitive reasons or whatever i mean you know how it is d led you get the injury report and you gotta we take that serious and as the season goes on it's just the way information travels you guys have all seen it i mean guys are getting carted off and they're all kind of ridiculous rumors the guys okay i just won't know until he gets an mri you know when arthur said that we're sitting there and he's right you see guys get caught it off. You immediately go, oh, no. And like as we said, you know, the, the, the emotions start to run, and you think, okay, his season's done. But Arthur's right. Some guys get you, you get, you get inside, Mike, you get it checked out. These guys are on the field the next day. So he didn't want to jump the gun and give you a conclusion of what this was, and I'm glad he didn't because right. we, I think most media went, he's finished. And Arthur was like, I'm not going to say that until we get the results, and they did. Now, Ethan Greenidge, you know, when you see a guy who looks emotional, and you, that's a dude who came over as a backup, and he did start for New Orleans for a couple of years, and he's had like two, of, I think three of his last four now. He's had injuries at one point in the season, and this is a guy you really feel for because he looked like he was emotionally spent. And, yeah. you know, the news was bad. In the case, to your point, I get it. You know, it's, you know, people see stuff and they meet, what? It's the first meeting. It might not be accurate, but you're throwing the information out there. Good news, because you and I, the buzz around camp was it felt like he was going to be gone for the whole season <laughs> because you're projecting yeah. what you heard from Jalen Ramsey, but that's silly because it's a completely different injury. It is. It is. It's Dukes and Bell. It's our Falcon Report, guys. Coming up, Grant McCauley is going to join us. We're going to talk more Braves coming up here in less than 10 minutes. Let's talk about how much time we need to see from certain guys, okay? First preseason game is Friday. I don't want to be saying this all week. There are certain guys on this team I need to see more of than others. If you were injured last year, Kyle Pitts, I need to see more of you, okay, than I do somebody who finished the season, I don't know, Tyler Algier, that showed up and showed out and gave us something last season. Now, you're going to say, wait a minute, Dukes is preseason. I don't care about all of this. I do. 
because we've seen, if you don't play in the preseason, how rusty we have started. Right. And this was even under Arthur Smith. I'm not going back to Dan Quinn. So, Mike, I need to see certain guys. How many snaps are we going to see from Desmond Ritter? Now, would you be upset if he played the first half of all three games? Not at all. I got to be honest. He only got four games under his belt. And we had this big running debate the last, what, uh, nine shows we did up in Buford after Falcons practice where guys are like, what do you think of Ritter? I'm like, ah, not that he looks bad. He's just not popping. And I hope that when the when we're coming back to work on Friday after that Dolphins game, it's the moments where he looks, looks really comfortable and he's doing his thing. I mean, it's not like I said. He does. I'm not saying he looks bad. You just want some of those, oh, wow, look at that. Because you're getting that stuff from mm. B. John Robinson, Drake London, Kyle Pitts catches, right? Yes. And, and we're getting it defensively. We've talked about some of the guys that look really good. Clark Phillips, Caden Ellis. You know, we've talked about some of the younger players. I think Eba Cady's had a good camp. But we, I can't say that definitively about Ritter. Yeah. I, and by the way, I'm not, I don't need to see Grady. No, I, don't, no. I, don't, I don't even need to see Calais Campbell, no. even though he's been active. No. I don't need to see that. Or Bud Dupree for that matter. I don't need, there are guys that I'm going to go, okay, I'm good. But there are other guys that I do need to see more of. And this gets down to what Arthur Smith is going to do and how he'll decide the playing time. This is what he said in regards to how much in this first preseason game that he's going to look at how much guys play. A lot of it will depend. You know, we'll play in the preseason how much. You know, be, for some guys, if you see how the practices go down in Miami. Um, but, you know, in terms of valuation, we got a lot of guys trying to, to earn a job and they need experience. You still got some young guys on this team and certainly the rookies. They've never played an NFL game and, and they need to get out there. Um, and it's an opportunity, but you want to make sure you're clean. You want to see the guys that can operate. It's just the next step, you know, in the, in the build up to the season and really the evaluation. You want to be clean operationally. Uh, you know, you usually see in the preseason, there's a million flags. You don't want to do that. You don't want to have procedure penalties. That's the stuff you're trying to get us ready to play a real game. All right. So uh, Arthur's telling you right there, kill your guy in practice. You probably won't play on Friday. You right. get killed in practice. You're probably going to see more snaps on Friday. That's basically what he's saying, right? Depends on practice. If Tyreek Hill goes off and catches three touchdowns in the practice sessions on Tuesday and Wednesday, Mike, <laughs> My guess is the corners are going to probably pay a little bit more. Correct. You need the work. If you get three picks, AJ, I'm just saying, and we won't know this, guys, because it is right. that part of the practice they're going to try to keep, you know, and not expose yeah, right. to, to the media. But reports will get out of it. Some guys played well and some others didn't. But that's what he's saying, and, and that is going to determine how much playing time these guys get on Friday. Right. You know, one guy we didn't mention, we were talking about dudes dudes on this team. You know, we were up in the air about Rashawn Evans. We didn't resign him. He's still a free agent. Yeah. Lorenzo Carter going to do something? I hope because he's also we said the same argument that goes for Grady goes for him. He's got better talent in the interior of the line next to Grady. Should be better. Is Lorenzo Carter technically is the will linebacker walking up to the line? I mean, imagine if that guy gets to where he was supposed to be. Although you could say after five years in the league, you are what you are. Right. I, well, yeah, but I've heard. Uh, and again, scheme matters and how you use a guy. But and I Mike, like I like Zoch. Want to see him pop? Well, and I've heard he's happy. Now, does that mean he's going to be good this year? I don't know. He's back home. He played well last year, considering, Mike, they brought him back. I think he's happy. If he's happy, I hope he balls out. Yeah, we need Zoe. That's a guy we really haven't even talked about while we've been up there. Right. So the uh, the defensive line it looks pretty stout. Edge rushers. The linebacker core we discussed at length during the week. And then we already just mentioned the, uh, the, the, the secondary. He's better than you've ever had. You know, Richie Grant's still confident he's going to have some, a valuable role to play on this team. So where, where's the, the – the only thing we keep coming back to, two things – is how quickly does Bergeron assimilate at left guard? Well, he's about to be tested. This is going to be a hell of a test. He's, he's about to be tested. Christian Wilkins and company have been getting after him all week, and then uh, that game on Thursday. Yeah, I I think, and this is just me saying, the Dolphins have an underrated defense from a personnel standpoint. Um, <laughs> their their D-line, there are most teams that would love to have Raquan Davis, Ogba, right. Jalen Phillips, and Christian Wilkins as their, D, their four D-line. There's there's not a lot of teams that can can say that. And Wilkins may be the third or fourth best defensive lineman in the league. Um, he's about to get paid as such, hopefully after the season. But and the by the way, I want to correct something. I said he was taken 13th. We took AJ Richard all 14th. Remember we were talking about yes. him all draft? Yes. And the Dolphins snaked him. Yeah, that's a guy we could have used a couple years ago, but AJ obviously worked out pretty well. So with the, the injury in the secondary, you still have Howard. Um, you know, I, I think they're, they're from a, just a talent standpoint. We'll see. But the point you're making about – the offensive line being tested, this is a good test. Right. This, this is going to be – I'd love to see one-on-ones this week, right, where mm -hmm. it's just, hey, he's going to beat you. 
and you got to stop him, and let's let's blow the whistle. And I'd love to see it because we've seen limited action with the Falcons because, again, you're not trying to beat your own people up. You're working on technique and all of those things, guys, but this is going to be full bore here. And remember, guys, uh, Justin – here's another thing, another name. I haven't mentioned this guy's name in about a week or two. Is Justin Schaefer going to be able to take a leap? Everyone just assumed playing against SEC competition, like he was a fit, was fit fourth, fifth rounder for a reason, but maybe Schaefer can pull it. Nobody out there, especially John Chuckery at night, Ever wants to see Jalen Mayfield out there again for this team. But Hennessy is a rotational guy. And technically Mayfield, who we were told earlier in camp, was actually not the worst thing out there. Right? Maybe he's, he's learned some lessons. Maybe he's gotten better. Yeah, no doubt. 